Cheesecake is my one-pound combat robot, a smaller version of the big robots you might have seen on TV. At our last tournament, Cheesecake dished out some big hits, took some big hits, and fought hard all the way to the finals, where he met his downfall against a robot called Mudskipper. But it's okay. We can rebuild him. We have the technology. This version of Cheesecake incorporates everything I've learned over the past year. I finally decided to ditch the FingerTech drive motors in favor of repeat robotics drive motors for increased reliability so the frame could get narrower and save some weight. I got rid of all my large wheels in favor of my smaller ones so the wheel wells could get smaller too. And I decided that my smaller weapon is better, so now the front of the robot can get a little more compact as well. I also got a new battery that can fit in the back to distribute the weight better, relocated some of the other components, and new cheesecake is ready to fight. Fundamentally, it's the same basic cheesecake we know and love, but now he's fine-tuned for maximum durability and maximum destruction. With new cheesecake tested and ready to go, we traveled all the way from Boston to the Pennsylvania College of Technology for the Fall 2023 Sword Tournament. Like the other tournaments we've been to, this tournament was double elimination. This means if you lose once, you drop down into the loser's bracket where it's a harder path to the finals, and then if you lose again, you're out of the tournament. At this tournament, the arena had a pit that robots could fall into. If you get pushed into it, or if you drive into it yourself, you lose the match. Historically, Cheesecake doesn't have the best track record when it comes to arenas with pits, so we'll see if new Cheesecake feels the same way. My first fight was against a robot called Off-Kilter, a wide vertical spinner with a titanium wedge. Normally, a horizontal spinner like Cheesecake would just glance off the wedge and go flying, but Cheesecake still has his not-so-secret weapon, a flat spatula attachment called the Sweet Tooth, which gets under wedges to keep Cheesecake on the ground. I'm also using a new egg-shaped weapon for this fight. It doesn't store as much energy as my regular weapon, but it's more compact, and it should take vertical hits better. Let's see what new Cheesecake can do. As always, the goal is to disable or destroy your opponent. A robot is disabled if it cannot move for a 10-second countdown, or if it falls into the pit. If both robots are still moving at the end of the time limit, then the winner is declared by a panel of judges, scoring based on the damage done to your opponent, the aggression you show in your engagements, and the control you have over your robot. Three, two, one, fight robots, fight. <laughs> Got a wheel, let's go! I'm trying to get to his other wheel, but I don't want to take any risks. Cheesecake is now in narwhal mode. Off kilter's weapon is struggling now. <laughs> Whoops, we got stuck together. One unstick later and we're back to the fight. Alright! New Cheesecake is already kicking butt and eating wheels. This fight really showcased Cheesecake's maneuverability, like right here where I faked one way and then turned the other way. 
Vertical spinners, like off-kilter, have trouble turning quickly because they're fighting their own gyroscopic forces every time. A spinning disc doesn't like to be tilted out of plane. But because Cheesecake is a horizontal spinner, he can turn very quickly without fighting his gyroscopic forces. It's working so far. Let's see what happens next. My next fight was against Repment, a double-disc vertical spinner. I wasn't quite sure what to expect from Repment, so I kept Cheesecake the same and sent him in. Three, two, one, Firebots fight! Both weapons are down, so now this fight is about showing aggression and control. I might as well get a nice pin to show some control. You can only pin your opponent for 10 seconds at a time. Six, five, four, three, two, one, release. I don't know if that's a better or worse position to be in. <laughs> that is a position. Uh, can you move? I don't move. I'd like to push him into the pit, but I really don't want to risk flipping him back over, because he's definitely a better push bot than I am. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Your winner, Cheesecake! This fight wasn't the most exciting victory, but I will take it. Cheesecake is specifically designed to not get stuck on his side, so if another robot didn't design for that, then I don't feel too bad about exploiting it. And speaking of exploiting, Repment immediately exploited my terrible driving mistake where I turned my back to him, and Repment absolutely launched Cheesecake twice. This rattled Cheesecake so badly that my weapon actually deflected out of plane enough to cut my own weapon motor wires and slice up my frame. That is nasty. On the flip side, Repment's weapon went down in that exchange because he didn't have time to battle harden his motor, so his magnet shattered during the second hit. Overall, this was a pretty ugly fight, but a win's a win, so Cheesecake moves on. My next fight was against a robot called Midnight Asparagus. It's a pretty standard four-wheel drive vertical spinner, albeit with a very cool-looking eggbeater-style weapon. For this fight, I switched back to my regular teardrop-shaped weapon, because sometimes you just have to stick with the classics. Three, two, one, Firebots fight! Both robots undefeated, but let's see who drops down in the movie back there after this. Yeah, take that. Uh oh. We got asparagus, can you? Awesome. This was a very clean fight, much better than the last one. The key takeaway here is... If you have an aluminum wedge, you'd better make it thick, because Cheesecake loves to tear through aluminum. My next fight was against a robot called Temper. Temper is a robot with a lot going on. First, it doesn't use wheels to move, it uses two sets of reciprocating feet, making this robot a shuffler, and therefore eligible for a 50% weight bonus, because shufflers are traditionally very slow and delicate. Second, its weapon is an overhead hammer saw, like Sawblaze or Scorpios from the BattleBots TV show, so it attacks from the top where most robots don't have much armor. And third, 
I didn't actually notice that Temper was competing until a few days before the event, so I was not prepared to fight him. Fortunately, I still had my old top armor from the last time we fought, but Cheesecake is noticeably smaller than he used to be, and his old armor doesn't quite fit anymore. So, uh, yeah, we're just gonna tape that on and hope for the best. The only remaining problem was that, with the top armor installed, Cheesecake was overweight, so I decided to remove the side armor since Temper doesn't hit from the side. This does create an issue where my sides are flat and I could theoretically get stuck on them, but it's a risk I had to take. Finally, let's talk strategy. At this point in the tournament, the floor had gotten really chewed up, and Cheesecake had already gotten stuck in it a couple of times while using the Sweet Tooth. So I thought, you know what? Let's ditch the Sweet Tooth. Temper can run his long forks like he always does, and I'll just zoom around him, wait for him to get caught on the floor, and then attack from the side. Let's see if it works. Three, two, one, fireball fight. Okay, um, I can explain. First, my strategy almost worked. Temper did get stuck on the floor, but I didn't attack quickly enough. After this, Temper brought the hammer down and then lifted me onto my side, where the vibration of my weapon was jiggling me across the floor. At this point, I decided to keep my weapon spinning in the hopes that I'd hit the arena wall and knock myself back over. It wasn't a great plan, but the only alternative was to shut my weapon off which would make me completely immobile and get me counted out. Unfortunately for me, Temper nudged me into the pit and won the match, but not before tearing into my wheel and chewing up my chassis. In exchange, I managed to rip off one of Temper's long forks. This fight sent Cheesecake into the loser's bracket. Where am I? And who did Cheesecake have to fight here in the loser's bracket? Why, Repment, of course. While Cheesecake had been advancing through the winner's bracket, Repment had been clawing his way up through the loser's bracket, winning four fights in a row. Now it was time for a rematch with Cheesecake. I made sure I was using my traditional teardrop-shaped weapon this time, and decided to just go weapon to weapon and see what happens. Now that's what I call combat robotics. Massive collisions, robots flying through the air, wheels and belts all over the floor. That is my new favorite fight of 2023. If you want to show someone what's so great about combat robotics, please show them this fight. Anyway, Cheesecake wins by eating some wheels, and this was actually the final fight of the loser's bracket, which meant that Cheesecake got to go back up into the winner's bracket for a rematch with Temper in the winner's final. So, what's the new strategy against Temper? Well, it turns out that I didn't read the tournament rules very closely, and robots were actually allowed to be 1 ounce or 28 grams over the 1 pound weight limit. This meant I actually did have spare weight for my side armor, even when using my top armor, so no more getting stuck on my side. Otherwise, it's gotta be the same strategy as before. Wait for Temper to get his forks caught on the floor, then go in for the kill. Second time's the charm? Let's find out. Three, two, one, fight robot fight. Oh! 
um, I guess I won? But what the heck happened? Well, first, my strategy almost worked, again, except we both got stuck on the gnarly floor, and Cheesecake got scooped up by Temper. When Temper attacked, you can see that he kind of... missed, which made him jump in the air and tumble upside down. Then, when his weapon landed on the floor, it launched him forward, straight into the pit. Was it bad luck? Was it poetic justice? I don't know, but it was a win for Cheesecake. The only thing left now was the grand final, the final rematch of Cheesecake and Temper. Because remember, it's a double elimination tournament, and Temper had only lost once so far. Now, on the one hand, my driving strategy wasn't working. On the other hand, there wasn't much else I could do, because the last thing I wanted to do, and the only real alternative, was to go face-to-face -face with Temper's massive plow. So you know what? Maybe third time's the charm. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one, fight for a boss fight. Are you kidding me? How did I survive that? Temper's massive plow scooped me up again, but somehow I managed to wiggle free just before being dumped into the pit, and Temper is the one who fell in. I definitely got lucky these last two fights against Temper, although I guess you could argue that the pit is an equal opportunity killer and Temper chose to play with fire twice. With this final fight, Cheesecake won first place at the Fall 2023 Sword Tournament. Honestly though, I would have been completely happy with second given how good of a robot Temper is, and especially given the fact that this was a new version of Cheesecake. At the end of the day though, all the competitors agree that it's just so much fun to design something you really believe in, show it off to the world, and then push it to its limits for a cheering audience. These are genuinely some of the best people I've met, and I never thought I'd have such a wonderful fan base to match. Thanks to everyone who participated, everyone who cheered, and everyone watching this video.